Welcome to the Sparks Heritage Museum's monthly online lecture series. I'm Christine Johnson. I'm the executive director for the museum, and I'm happy you're joining us here today as we welcome Sparks City Councilman Donald Abbott, who is speaking today on the subject of Longford, Ireland. This lecture complements the exhibit on now at the Museum on Sister Cities, which was guest curated by Stephanie Fry. I hope you'll drop into the museum and see the exhibits on now at the Sparks Heritage Museum soon. The museum is open Tuesday through Friday, 11 to 4 p.m. and Saturdays 1 to 4 p.m. And we invite you to join as a member as well. We are a nonprofit organization and we rely on the donations and support of our community. And our members who support us here today, welcome. We're happy to see you popping in here. And for those of you who aren't members, again, we hope you consider joining as a member and becoming part of our family. At this time, I'd like to introduce Spark City Councilman Donald Abbott. Donald was first elected to the Spark City Council in 2016 and was re-elected in 2020 and represents Ward 1. He is also very a very active member of the Board of Directors for the Sparks Heritage Museum and is noted on the City of Sparks' website as being the first millennial and youngest person to serve on the Sparks City Council. Donald is a very proud graduate of Sparks High School and hugely active in the community, uh, which many of you already know if you follow him in any part on Facebook. And finally here, it should be noted that Donald was recently honored as Irish Person of the Year by the Northern Nevada Sons and Daughters of Aaron, a very timely honor given the topic of the lecture today. Thank you all again for being with us here today and let's welcome Mr. Donald Abbott. Thank you, thank you, Christine, and thank you all for joining today. Um, this is gonna be fun. It was fun just to put this whole slide show together and uh, I went to Longford or I went to Ireland as a whole um, back in November of 2017. Um, and it's it just fun to just rekindle those memories with my friends that went with me and uh, um, put, put everything together. And uh, actually we learned, I learned a little bit more about Longford during this process. So, you know, the title of the presentation today is, just, you know, Longford Ireland is a short look at a long story um, if anyone knows, you know, I can definitely ramble about uh, Longford. Longford is a very special place in my heart. And I'll, um, you know, I grew up at that park. The park's right down the street from my house. I learned how to play every sport. I know how to play to this day, from football to tennis, ultimate frisbee. Um, we played capture the flag there. We built igloos there. Like Longford is definitely a special place in my heart. We had um, there's a group of us, a group of my friends, or we, we call ourselves Park Friend. Twenty of the two cities, but the twenty goes back to 1975, and so it's not just something recent. It's, it's interesting to see the the, the twenty of the city about it. But uh, Longford is a county town in the county of Longford itself. It's around 10,000 people, you know, compared to our 100,000 plus that we have here in Spark. This is from the day when we showed up at Longford. They actually have our city of Sparks flag, and they're not flying it year round, but they flew it the day when uh, we were showing up just to, um, to represent um, or welcome us coming in. On the left is uh, Ireland. It's uh, the uh, Camlin River, um, which is in Longford, and to the right, obviously, is the, sorry, <laughs> the Chucky River, uh, right at Rock Park, with a beautiful sunset. You know, there's many immigrants that were, you know, that, you know, came in the um, just on the east coast or on the west coast that uh, you know came to Virginia City um, during the during the heyday and you know when BC you know no longer was occurring people you know went around to other parts of the state and so we have many people that came here and settled here in the lovely city of Spark. That is an actual sign that's outside of Longford or when you're coming into town and you know they're proud of being twins the the city of Sparks. We have Longford Park, which is named after our sister city, Longford Island. Um, they don't have a park named after us. They don't have um, anything else I can think of that is uh, um, named after the city of Sparks, but they do welcome us. They are very proud of the twinning um, between the two cities. Um, and it's kind of the, what's unique about Longford, I look at it almost like a Carson City where it's a town and like a county, it's kind of the best way to put it. Uh, put it together. Uh, it's been around. Well, the, the county was established back in the 1500s, um, you know, many, many moons ago compared to when Sparks. We became a city in 1905, and you know, our state of Nevada was 1864. So they were around for many, many more years. They have much more history than we do. Longford is a, like I said, a county town. And there's a story or an article here. It was 
where they they gave up their town and one of the representatives of um, in Longford and his name is actually Donal, which is the Irish version of Donald. And he has told me that Longford is definitely it is a town. It is it is a county too. So it's a county town. Going back to the history of just kind of the whole how we got to Longford, um, this is a mercy. Well, Little Flower School is over there in Reno off uh, Plum in uh, Kipsky. And Little Flower School was founded by the Sisters of Mercy. And they you know, were invited from Longford, Ireland. And they, you know, they created, helped set that whole school up. Um, Sisters of Mercy, you know, they remained at Little Flower until 2012, so around nine years ago. Um, Sister Margaret Oak, and that'll be an important name for some future photos, uh, was last serving principal when, while they were there. And they returned back to Ireland in March of 2012. And, and so, yeah, I'm sure many of you, you guys, if you guys attend a little flower, you might remember any of those sisters. Going back to 1956, um, actually, Father Vincent Cunningham of Ely of the Sacred Heart Catholic Church, that in the bottom left, um, he's the one that reached out to Longford, um, the Covenant of Mercy in Longford, to see if they were willing to assist. And that's how we got the Sacred Heart School in Ely and a little flower school in Reno, uh, which are, they both still stand today. And that was the um, that was one of our, our our connections to Longford. Definitely the the first one. That's one of the reasons why we decided to take some action to to twin. Is you know there's some some ties there. Sisters of Mercy, the original ones. And what was super unique about this is when we went, we got to meet. That was well earlier. Sister Mary Margaret that was the last principal of Sisters of Mercy, and then Sister. Sister Elizabeth O'Neill um, was also there. And the redhead, that's my friend, Amy, uh, she went to the, a little flower and she remembers Sister um, Margaret and Sister O'Neill. And in the next slide, those were actually, we have Sister O'Neill on the left side and Sister Oates, um, Sister Margaret Oates on the right side. And so it was super cool just to be able to, you know, meet these influential women who, you know, came here and, they helped, um, you know, they were part of Sisters of Mercy and we had to meet them um, in Longford, Ireland. And it wasn't part of a planned trip. We were, I remember it was pouring rain, which surprised we're in Ireland. And we we were walking around and for whatever reason, it popped up that, hey, we could go do this. And we didn't call. We literally just knocked on the door and they let us in and we were able to like I said, meet them. And it was very very awesome for, you know, for Annie to, you know, see these two ladies that were very influential in her life growing up. It was just super cool, just their memory and being able to to meet these, um, some, you know, kind of legendary people that have traveled back and forth and were very influential in our, uh, in our community. This is the Sisters of Mercy Longford of Longford. You can see in the bottom right, you can see Little Flowers, Reno, Nevada, and then right above that is Our Lady um, in Ely. So shows where they branched out all the different places they branched out to um, over the years. Uh, going back to uh, the proclamation between City of Sparks and Longford, um, Longford Island, uh, we had Mayor, Mayor Lillard. It's neat just to have that documentation and seeing the, you know, seeing the names on the, the paper. It, a lot of you, I'm sure, is somewhat historical, uh, um, interested in, in history. And you can see, you know, Mayor Lillard was very, a very influential person in the city of Sparks, and just seeing, seeing those names and seeing their uh, connections to our uh, to our city. And so I, I chose not to read all of this, and I was um, hoping that you can, some of you can check it out. After 1975, when we had uh, after we twinned, there was a celebration where we had members of uh, Ireland love Longford Ireland come over here to Sparks and then a later day we sent people over um, from Sparks to Longford Ireland and some of those you know, Mayor of Reno um, and just um, there is a celebration between the two people and so the next um, photos are going to be well we'll, we'll have a couple articles but we will have some photos to just celebrating the people that uh, that showed up that were here for the um, to, to celebrate the 20 of it all and there's articles that, that are here to talk about how we are you know, just celebrating the, the twinning between the two 
between the two cities. And it was, it was an exciting time. I think everyone's still proud of their heritage between the two cities, for sure. And that was in the Nevada State Journal. And here's just a whole bunch of articles um, just talking about when, you know, Spark sending people over to visit Ireland and just celebrating that, uh, that heritage between the two cities. Yeah. And like I said, it was a very proud moment for many. These are people um, from uh, Longford that came over and her are celebrating. This is in um, uh, Sean Carey, city manager, Sean Carey, um, his office. And that um, um, when she started having the, uh, and, and that was that was not in 1976. Sorry, a little more recent times. And I know Sean's a proud, uh, has some proud Irish heritage. He's been, I uh, believe he's been to Longford, Ireland. I'm, pretty sure there and just celebrating that keeping that alive going back in time a little bit this is when mayor lillard just welcoming you know the people that, that came to, came over from longford ireland here in our city showing them around um i'm sure there's some of these old houses are still around you'll probably recognize some of the photos as we move on um and just like I said, it was a big, uh, big old party to celebrate. And that's Mayor Lillard on the microphone um, on the right, for reference as well. And this is um, <clears throat> downtown Sparks before um, we, we used to have the train, tr the train exhibit further west on Victorian. And, and that, was, that was where it was. And if you go into the Sparks Museum, we have a replica of this, uh, of Lillard Park, is what it's named after. And this is just the delegation getting on the train, checking it out, you know, enjoying uh, the little trinkets that are on the train and having, having uh, being like a little kid, having fun. And there's the Mary Lillard in the middle, uh, with two ladies and the other people from Ireland as well. Immaculate Conception, still, still down there, that church is standing there with the Mary Lillard. This is uh, so for reference, like I said, the park was down further west. And if anyone knows where um, that was a beauty salon in most recent times, and there on the top left of that photo would be a Berg's bar uh, turned into Fair and Sons, and now it's uh, Chico's. So across from here is the RTC bus station, which is where they're standing at. This is the most recent proclamation through. Um, through the city of Sparks that we that we did for uh, for Longford, some of the twinning. Um, this is when we had Mayor Gino Martini. It was April 24, 2016. Um, we identified you know April 24th as Longford Ireland Day, just uh, like trying to keep that that heritage alive and well between the two. And here's Gino Martini, and um, we have Willie Poocher and uh, Lisa Artiga. Uh, Willie is the president of Stato, Sons and Daughters of Aaron. Um, and I know, um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Lisa is also a member of Stato. And so this was um, a special time for the Irish group here in Sparks and Anil and Reno as a whole, just to celebrate that that heritage and and just you know recognizing that they're still an active uh, sister city, which is Longford, Ireland. And this is going to our trip um when i went over in november and those are all my friends in the the four in the middle and then don all amy carmen jessica and noah and then on the front sitting at the um, the dais are the lady in the middle um was pretty much the, the mayor of of it'd be longford county now and then the other are counselors which are similar to what i am and then lady in the top left was the, the librarian the, I think the county librarian is the proper title. Um, when we went to Longford, Ireland, you know, our trip, we put everything in a backpack. You know, I wasn't bringing suits. I wasn't bringing um, slacks. Like I had a polo and jeans on that day. And I remember us showing up, they were all expecting a much older fellow than our, myself and my um, young friends. And it, it was super neat how welcoming they were. And those will be some next, next slides just showing us. They took us on a trip just around around Longford County and you know all, all I did was just reach shoot an email out and say hey we're showing up you know I, I just want to say hi like I wasn't expecting a, a tour of the town and 
to meet everyone. And uh, they were very welcoming. I think they were very excited to have uh, um, someone from Spark uh, go over. And the uh, previous councilman, uh, Ron Schmidt, I know it was the last one that went over and he definitely kept that, that relationship active as well. They were very welcoming people and it was awesome to spend some time to spend some time with them. We were able to make the paper too with the photo. <laughs> um, so the photo that I just previously was was below and that was me and the counselors. Um, and then obviously Don All and Mary uh, in the long for leader news. And it was just, it was neat to see that they were able to mail that to me and um, it was fun. Just it was a fun uh, fun trip with the icing on the cake with this. Uh, and this is in uh, a flag of Longford, uh, of Longford um, that uh, Willie Poocher actually received and gave to me. And it's it's down there at the Sparks Museum. So if you guys want to get down, we still have our changing gal or it's in our changing gallery, which talks about the sister city. We have Longford, Ireland. We have Garibaldi, Oregon, and then we also have a um, uh, a list of other cities that are uh, named Sparks in in the United States, and then we also you know, have a map where you can interact, where you can say, hey, if we wanted a sister city somewhere else in the United States, you know, where would we, where would you want one? Just looking for community input on there. So if you haven't been down, um, there's a lot of great photos and uh, a lot of great information on the Long Island and Garibaldi as well. And this is a map of our trip that they took us on. Uh, they actually framed it and gave it to me. And, you know, going back, I was telling you how I, I went with the backpack. We, you know, we did laundry. We had our, our Airbnbs. I think I had three shirts and two pairs of pants sort of thing. And we packed pretty light. That was the goal. Um, and so they gave me this plaque that I actually I mailed back because I didn't have room in my backpack. I didn't want to carry it around. On the airplane and uh, it survived by the mailing um, from Longford uh, back home to Sparks, Nevada. Um, and so, you know, we'll talk about Grenard and talk about some of the other spots. But Longford's located fairly central um, from Dublin. It would be northwest ish, uh, not, not too far, but uh, it's, it's fairly centralized. And uh, this is uh, Grenard Mate. Um, so the remains of the Monte and Bailey Castle and the National Monument in uh, Grenard County, Ireland. Uh, beautiful, um, beautiful hill or mountain, I think is what some of the, uh, they would say. And uh, I definitely have a different definition of a mountain living here in the Sierra Basin, uh, the Goon Basin. Um, that was not a mountain, it was more of like a shadow. I think Shadow Mountain might have been taller, but uh, here or there. And just a beautiful view. Um, like I said, this is one of the highest mountains you can say in the area um bottom left you can see some of the fellow, fellow irish enjoyed their uh, evening up there with some uh some beers <laughs> um but it was uh just everything's green everything everywhere everywhere you look and obviously it rained a lot and which helps create that green uh green beauty that we have and, um this is a, a St. Mary's Church in Garnard. It's right next to that that hill. Um, there's there's a church, uh, it's the Garnard Church, and then go to the next one, which is the inside. That's the remodeled. They they remodeled it previously, and that was not very well received by the locals. Um, I don't remember ex exactly why, but probably because it was somewhat changed. Like we we all made comments of how beautiful it was and how just and we were very impressed. But it looked absolutely gorgeous to us. We we're very, very impressed, and you know, we just came from this beautiful hill with a luscious steam view, and came into a church, and that was on the way out, out of the, um, out of the church to the cemetery. And, and that was very neat. I don't know if anyone was like go to a different country and just exploring the, you know, ex exploring the cemeteries, I and mean, especially some of these in Longford. You know, you, you could, you know, you're paying your respects to people. But seeing just how old, you know, how beautiful these cemeteries are, which that probably sounds really different, but there is just amazing tomb markers that have survived the, the test of times that were there. And, you know, my last name of Abbott, there is, you know, it's interesting to find people with the last name of Abbott. I have, I don't think they were relatives of mine, but um, it's neat, neat to see that. This is at one of those lovely pubs that, was in Longford County. 
it was one of the first ones that we went to, and this is one of the, the very first place we realized, found out that, uh, or found out for sure that you do not tip when you're in Ireland. It's not a common thing to, to provide a tip when you're getting a beverage um, at a bar. Uh, the Irish are very proud that they provide a service they provide an A plus service and there's no tip required or needed. Now, it's strange when you're in Dublin, that's more of your, it was more normalized to tip there. But on the outskirts, like in, I don't want to say the rules, what kind of the rules, it was not such a common thing to be, to be tipping. And this was a, a young, young lad that he did not want our money. And then we obviously wanted to give him, and we talked to him more, and we realized what, uh, you know, how, we learned we learned a lot about the whole tipping system when we were there and uh we de definitely drank a lot of guinness i wore my my guinness shirt that i bought at the guinness uh, uh brewery there in dublin um i will say if you like guinness do not drink guinness in ireland because it doesn't taste the same back over here and uh, another just fun fact about the booze was it was so interesting to you know guinness was a uh, a domestic because obviously they're, they're making it there you know, Bud Light, Budweiser imports. So, you know, we're buying $7 six packs of Guinness or paying, you know, whatever we did for a pint of Guinness. Budweiser, Bud Light was $12 for a six pack. Uh, this is also in, right down the street from that last bar. Um, this gentleman allowed my um, Annie is on the left, Carmen and Jessica, the other lady, they actually got to hang out there and kind of bartend and have fun and this, he owned the bar, I think, for 40-ish years. The guy welcomed us with hands, you know, arms wide open, and we had a great night, splendid night there, and um, got to meet there. We got to meet the butcher of town, which that was an interesting gentleman just to talk to and to, to um, interact with. And then there was another a gentleman that um, he worked in the city government. And he retired, and we got to see him the next morning. And he was, "Oh, you guys are so much fun!" And it was, it was a fun time, fun time in that. Uh, in that pub. Um, this photo is Roy's, and if anyone knows me personally, my father's name is Roy, which led me to take this photo, and it turned out that there's a lot more interesting history to go with the photo of Roy's. Um, and so Roy's, um, it, it's the it's a reputed location that there was a um, there's a business premise that was Cunard Lines, which is a British cruise line. They sold tickets for the Titanic in Longford Town. And Roy's is the reputed location of that offer. And so 14 people actually perished from Longford on the Titanic. Um, some women were saved. And there's a statue now that's been erected outside of Roy's um, to remember the tragedy and the immigration of, um, from Longford in general. And so that's the statue there to the left. And I hope you guys were able to read a little bit of that. And it was just, very neat to, you know, to see a spot that has so much history. You know, I think everyone across the world knows what the Titanic is and what happened that, you know, that evening. And just to, to be next to a spot that has so much historical value um, was quite, quite interesting, very moving. And so here is our token to the lovely, uh, See, uh, Longford, uh, Longford, Ireland. It's so a Longford Park located on Greenbrae and then Weezy. And it has two tennis courts, a basketball um, half court, um, has a park. Um, obviously, benches is places for picnics. Uh, and this is, um, there's a rock right outside, Mayor Lillard and some of the previous council members um, who the city manager was. and. This is in 1977, so roughly two years after we officially twinned with uh, with Longford, Ireland. Um, they got a park after it, out of it. <laughs> and like I said earlier, Longford Park is definitely one of my favorite parks. It's a very special place to me. If you can see through the playground, there's a spot where you're gonna have picnics and all, but there used to be like a, a big brown shelter. I just remember all the pigeons hung out there and all the skateboarders hung out. Uh, but that field to the right is, like I said, we grew up playing sports there every weekday, every weekend. Um, very, very special place. So if anyone knows geocaching, I do enjoy geocaching. I will put a plug in that 
There's a geocache there hidden by myself. Uh, it's called Hoop. There it is. I think that gives a fairly good clue away. If anyone knows what geocaching is, or or if you don't, um, you can download an app for free. You can get out there and you can really explore your city. Explore really anywhere. There's there's geocaches in Longford in Ireland. That there's a location, a hint. You can get out, go explore, and it gives you out your house. And a lot of our local spots have history. Uh, some are riddles and especially during the, you know, the hard, I call it hard shutdown. We did a lot of geocaching because it was socially distant. You know, we're not bothering anyone, but uh, everyone's interested. My geocache is there. I checked on it the other day, um, live and well. I do have to put a plug in to, uh, for anyone that is Irish or if you're interested in the Irish heritage, uh, you can join Sado. And then obviously the lovely Sparks Museum is always open for volunteers and uh, as well as just members to sign up. Um, you know, I, I put a plug in for SATA. They've done cleanups at Longford. So they're they're involved there. You know, the museum puts on lectures besides this, this one. There's one once a month. And so you can hear others. Uh, we've had two so far that were virtual um, and normally they're in person. But it's just fun ways we're just trying to get through the pandemic and try to get information out. So if you want to join or one more information on either the websites are both there, irishnevada.org and sparksmuseum.org. And then that's the uh, the uh, membership pricing for Sado. Uh, you can, you'll can you see that on the website as well as here's our museum um, off our website for pricing for anyone that's interested. And uh, lots of fun facts about, um, from the museum that you'll get through our newsletters. And I wanna summarize how it, how neat it is that we, you know, we have a sister city, Longford Island. I will open it up for questions. In association with Sado and the exhibit that we had with the Shamrocks, could you tell us a little bit more about that project? Yeah, um, and so we did uh, Shamrocks for Seniors, and going back in time a little bit, we did a Valentine project for Valentine Cards for Seniors, and it was a very large success that uh, Willie Pucher, the president of Sado, reached out to myself to see if we could do something for Shamrocks for seniors. And what we had is we had a whole bunch of kids that already, a lot of them made Valentine cards for seniors, make these cute little Shamrocks, which of course I don't have any of my room. I have a ton of my living room right now that are just positive messages that were, um, I dropped off yesterday from Meals on Wheels to, uh, to get them out to our seniors. A lot of those seniors are you know, staying, staying home staying safe. Um, I'm going to get some dropped off. Well, I'm in quarantine right now, but I'm going to get them dropped off to uh, the various um, assisted living spots that we have here in, here in uh, Sparks, just to try to spread some Irish cheer and uh, spread some, you know, some smiles and joy to, to each other. So it worked out well. And if anyone's watching that made one, thank you. Uh, I'm guessing we're around 1,500-ish. I just picked up a couple more today. So that's my ballpark number which was a pretty good success, I think, overall. Well, maybe with all those 1,500, we'll have a whole lot of Irish luck in the community. That would be awesome. A final uh, plug-in, too, while you check that, um, for the museum with regard to our digital online programming here, it is as a response to COVID, as Donald mentioned, uh, but we're trying to keep programming going in any capacity. So that's why we're doing these online lectures right now and, and uh, hope to move back to in-person programming in the, in the future. But well, we always have a reason to come down to the museum. We special events, you can get married there. You can um, mm -hmm. have artwork up there. Um, it's always, um, always something going on at the Sparks Museum. And then, like I said, if you want to volunteer, if you just want to volunteer one day a week or if you want to help out, um, there's a variety of ways to help out in the Sparks Museum. And we would love to have your help. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in.